A member of the state militia faces off against an African-American veteran during the 1919 Chicago race riot. July 27, 1919. In 1919 Chicago was in the throes of an exhausting heat wave. Vandalized first floor of a house. Thousands flocked to the beaches lining Lake Michigan for some relief. Troops gather at 47th Street and Wentworth Avenue during the Chicago race riots in 1919. Among them, a group of black boys that included 17-year-old Eugene Williams. Over the week, injuries attributed to the episodic confrontations stood at 537, with two-thirds of the injured being black and one-third white while the approximately 1,000 to 2,000 who lost their homes were mostly black. Eugene, who was on a raft, inadvertently drifted over the invisible line that separated the black and white sections of the 29th Street Beach. The state-run militia patrols the streets of Chicago during the race riot of 1919. Photo dated August 1, 1919. One white beachgoer, insulted, began throwing rocks at the black kids. It is considered the worst of the nearly 25 riots in the United States during the Red Summer of 1919, so named because of the racial and labor-related violence and fatalities across the nation. Eugene Williams slipped off his raft and drowned. Police removes the body of a black man killed during the 1919 Chicago race riots. The murder and the subsequent refusal by the police to arrest the person initially responsible ignited a race riot that would go down in history as one of the country's bloodiest and least known to date. People moving out from their house, accompanied by policemen. When the riot ended on August 3rd, 23 African Americans had died along with 15 whites and more than 500 injured. Mob chasing victims during the race riots. Over 1,000 black families lost their homes after being set alight by the rioters. Kids cheering in front of a burning house. In early 1919, the socio-political atmosphere of Chicago around and near its rapidly growing black community was one of ethnic tension caused by competition among new groups, an economic slump, and the social changes engendered by World War I. Illinois National Guard Soldiers With the Great Migration, thousands of African Americans from the American South had settled next to neighborhoods of European immigrants on Chicago's South Side, near jobs in the stockyards, meatpacking plants, and industry. Policemen showing their capabilities. Meanwhile, the Irish had been established earlier and fiercely defended their territory and political power against all newcomers. Five policemen and one soldier with rifle. Post-World War I tensions caused inter-community frictions, especially in the competitive labor and housing markets. The combination of prolonged arson, looting, and murder made it one of the worst race riots in the history of Illinois. Overcrowding and increased African-American resistance against racism, especially by war veterans contributed to the visible racial frictions. During World War I, essentially being fought on the other side of the Atlantic, there had begun a great migration of African Americans from the rural South to the cities of the North. Also, a combination of ethnic gangs and police neglect strained the racial relationships. When the war came to an end thousands of servicemen, black and white, found their jobs had been taken by southern blacks and other immigrants. An interracial official city commission was convened to investigate causes and issued a report that urged an end to prejudice and discrimination. Chicago Race Riot of 1919 
United States President Woodrow Wilson and the United States Congress attempted to promote legislation and organizations to decrease racial discord in America. Chicago Daily Tribune Governor Loden took several actions at Thompson's request to quell the riot and promote greater harmony in its aftermath. Black residents of the South Side moved their belongings with a hand-pulled truck to a safety zone under police protection during the Chicago race riots of 1919. Sections of the Chicago economy were shut down for several days during and after the riots, since plants were closed to avoid interaction among bickering groups. A group of white men and boys examined the destroyed homes of black Chicago residents after the city's 1919 riot. Mayor Thompson drew on his association with this riot to influence later political elections. A soldier tells a man to back up during the race riots in Chicago in 1919. The soldiers were in place to keep white people in their own districts. Even so, one of the more lasting effects may have been decisions in both white and black communities to seek greater separation from each other, photo credit, Library of Congress. A police officer stands in front of Burke's lunch room in the heart of Chicago's business district July 30, 1919.